This is a video tutorial by JimmyR.com and I'll be showing you how to install and configure the PlayStation emulator called EPSXE. It's, uh, it hadn't been updated since 2003 because the source code l was lost, but it still retains as the best emulator because of its use of plugins. Uh, other people can make plugins for the emulator so they can tr control many aspects of the gameplay. So it's a little bit difficult to install, that's why I'm making this tutorial. A lot of people have asked me questions on configuring it. So I'm going to go to their download site, just searching EPSXE, I'm going to download their Windows file. It's very much more complicated to install on Linux because there's several packages you need, like the GTK, and you need like an older version, you need the 1.2. But anyways, I extract this file and now I have the folder that says EPSXE uh, this is it doesn't work yet even after you install it because you need a BIOS and you need the plugins it doesn't come with any plugins and it doesn't come with BIOS unfortunately if you want the whole package with plugins installed so you can plugins already installed you can go to mininova.org or the Pirate Bay or any other pirate site and search EPSXE plugins and it'll offer you packages with EPSXE with the, the plugins already installed or whatever. They're already in the appropriate folder and maybe they're configured. I don't know. But you could also just download the plugins. EPSXE plugins. And if you download the torrent you might get older versions. But uh, I'll go ahead and only download the top-rated ones, like Loopy's Glide. <laughs> okay, I just download the zip files that I need. This is the video graphics plugin. Now I need a sound one. I like this P-E-O-P-S <laughs> thing. I always call it P-Ops, even though I probably shouldn't, because it's an acronym. Okay, uh, and finally I download the CD driver. Again, I'll choose the little PEOPS thing. Uh, PEOPS is like an uh, open source one if you go search G PEOPS. <laughs> uh, you'll get the SourceForge page for it, and they even have PlayStation 2 plugins that you can download for a PlayStation 2 emulator. There really is a PlayStation 2 emulator, and it does work for lim Linux. If you search PS2 emulator, <laughs> it'll give you the correct page. It's recently been under heavy development. I don't have any ROMs to show you, so I can't give you a video tutorial on how to use it, because I hadn't tried it, but it's something you should check out too. Okay, so now I have all these freaking plugins. They're all on my desktop. I'll just copy all the zip files. I'll go to plugins, I'll paste it here, and I'll extract. I like 7z zip, but you can use winzip or winrar. I'll go ahead and delete the zip files now, because they're useless. And probably the readme is because I will not read them. Not that it frees you much space. But, anyway, uh, now I need a BIOS. We don't have any BIOS here, so I'm going to go ahead and search for a BIOS. Again, you can use the peer-to-peer -peer network. It might peer-to-peer -peer networks. It might be easier, but the file name is scph1001.bin. That's the name of the BIOS, and it's basically just the program that I guess runs the memory card management and all that stuff in the beginning, the boot-up screen of the PlayStation. Okay, so I search for that, and I'm going to find a bunch of junk. I like the Aldo tools guy because he... Let's search for Aldo. Yeah, there we go. Um, let's see if I can find it. Here we have it. So I search the name of the, of the BIOS and Aldo. The first result is correct. I'm going to click this SCPH1001 and it's going to give me a whole bunch of mirrors 
to be safe, I can use web.archive.org because it's from the archive.org. The site doesn't necessarily have to host anymore. I can still save it. So I save this BIOS. I save the BIOS, and now I'm going to extract it into my BIOS directory. Alright, now I have the BIOS there. Whoops. Delete the original zip. And I'm pretty much done. I can run EPSX, whatever. And I have to configure everything. I can set it up so it uses the frames per second limit so the games don't run like super fast over like the intro FPS limit auto detect it and you're pretty much set open the game I skipped ahead and configured everything go to desktop and run the game it works <laughs> This has been a tutorial by jimmyr.com. Check us out for more tutorials.